Okay, so today we're going to look at how to georeference an image. But so previously we've looked at how to georeference an image that is a plan view. So it could be a map of an area. But now we're actually going to look at vertical images. So slices through the crust. So you can see here I've got a seismic image running from A to B. And so it's a vertical image. So how do we actually orientate those on, on a map? So that you could actually look at maybe a geological map click on the geological map and it'll show where on the geological map you are in this um, profile. So I've loaded in this section AB. Um, I'll do it one more time, because uh, although I have done it previously. So you'd go grid and image, display, image, bitmap tip. So I'm looking for a image file. So you can see there, sorry for the noises in the background. Um, this is section AB and it's a PNG file. Okay, and I've put it to transparency none, default registration for the location. I'm going to start a new map and I'm overwriting it because I've done it before. So you can see it loads it in as a map, but please make sure you don't actually use this map because often that can cause problems. Um, you can see the best thing to do is close that, so don't save changes go to your grids and see where it's loaded the actual PNG file. So load it here. So it no longer says map up here. It says .png. Put it here. Um, and so the next step now is, as previously, we're going to create a warp. Um, but it's going to be a little bit different to what we've done previously. So over here, I've actually got a database. And you should look at creating it ahead of time. And so what I've got is the x and y coordinates of my point A and my point B. And I've worked out the distance between them. So how I get this distance column is I make sure that it, my X and Y are in meters. And then I go database tools, channel tools, make a distance channel. Put in your X and Y and then give a heading for your distance channel. And it gives it here. So mine is about 21,700 meters between A and B. So now I'm going to create a warp. So I go coordinates, georeferencing, define a warp. I'm going to look where I'm saving it. So this is my A, B, and I'm going to say section. Okay. And I'm doing a four-point quadrilateral warp with semi-interactives. I click on OK. Define output coordinates. Um, I don't think this is too important. But I'm just trying to think. Let me just double-check my notes here. Define a warp. Um, okay, I don't think it's too important because we're not actually defining coordinate systems. Um, okay, so let's just say no for now. Okay, click on OK. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the top left corner. I click on it, and I actually should have clicked a bit lower because you can see my seismic section doesn't start at zero; it starts at zero point six. So the x coordinate of this point here is the distance along the profile. So I'm at a distance of 0. y is 0 0.6. And you also check my notes again whether we have to put negative. Yes, um, so we're putting negative so that negative is down. So mine is 0 0.6. So that's the y. So what's on the y axis? Click next. Um, so I'm slightly wrong because I put 0 0.6, but actually 0 0.6 is at this point here. So I'll be a little bit off. Here, my x is 21.6, I'll put 700. So this is the distance along the profile that I worked out in this column here. And y is minus 0 0.6 because we're at the same level. Click Next. I'm now going to go to the bottom here. Um, I'm not actually sure what my two-way travel time is at the bottom. I'm going to go a bit up here again. This isn't very accurate, but I'm trying to get to approximately at about 2. Clicking here. So again, my x is 21,700 because that's the distance. And we're minus 2 for our y. And over here, I'm going to click. And this is 0 and minus 2. And I click Finish. OK. And now we would go coordinates, georeference, warp a grid. So the grid that I'm choosing is this section ab.png file, um, which I have to find. 
Okay, it's over here. I'm clicking on it. The warp, it's already chosen the one I just created. And I'm going to choose what I'm going to call my warp file. So again, I'll say section uh, A, B, and warp. I know that it's warped. And I'm going to choose here GeoTIFF because it's really an image file. Okay, I'm going to click next. Finish. Okay, and it shouldn't load it in for you. So you go into grid, right click, go add grid, change your file type here to GeoTIFF, and you can see it's over here. Let's just load it in and see if it worked. Ugh. Okay, so the problem here is, I think, um, the fact that like our x value is going from 0 to 21,000. Our y value is going from 0 to 2. So it is our vertical exaggeration that's a problem. Let's check whether this is the case. So I'm actually going to go find that warped file. Um, this is the folder where I've been saving everything for this project. Uh, I'm just going to look for the newest one. Here's my warp. Okay, I'm going to open up my warp file. And you can he see here, these are the X and Y of the original and the X and Y that I created. So maybe we need to make these bigger for the similar units. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to make this 6,000. So I'm timesing by 1,000. Oh no, I'm going to times it by 1,000. Oh sorry, I'm times it by 10,000. And so if I'm times it by 10,000 there, this would become minus 20,000. Okay. And I'm going to save that. So just whatever you times the one by, you times the other by. And I've, ti I've chosen that amount so that I've got similar values. That now my X and Y values are both in the thousands. And I'm going to re-warp our grid. Next, overwrite, yes, finish. Okay, I'm just going to reload the image. Maybe I probably should have checked whether it had made the changes automatically, but I'm just going to reload it. Uh, that hasn't, oh, oh, it worked, yay. Okay, and so you can see here, if I put my mouse in the bottom right-hand corner, this says um, down here, look at these values, it says I'm at about zero, so it's at 49, and it says minus 6,000 in the Y. Up to here, I'm going to 21,000, which was expected. And down here, our Y value is going to minus 20,000. So we've got this image. So you just need to keep in mind that your Y values are times by 10,000. So now what we're going to be able to do, I'm just going to close this and not save the changes, is that when this becomes useful is when you actually load it into your 3D viewer. And I'm going to have to do half the image here and half the image, uh, sorry, half the video now and half the video later because the laptop I'm working on, the graphics card doesn't work. So we'll go as far as we can now. So I'd go to 3D and I'm going to go orient a grid. I'm going to choose my grid and it's actually the one I've just created. So it's the section AB warp.tiff. So it's the section AB that's got the coordinates already loaded. So the distance values and the Y values. I click on OK. And I click on, I'm just going to check my notes again because I haven't done this in a while. So orientation, section, reference point, top left corner. So now what this is talking about is I'm going to put in the exact X and Y values at the top left corner so that it can figure out where exactly on the map this section or this profile should lie. So my top left corner was point A. And so I know that point A is at an X of this value and a Y of this value. So I'm actually going to type that in. So I'm going to type in 9852187, although I probably shouldn't be so accurate because I was, it was an approximation of where the line started, but you can try to be as accurate as possible. 747.3. So this is exactly where my point A was. Just double check my values. And my Z is zero because it was, oh, it wasn't zero because it, um, it wasn't actually at the surface. But I think for now, I'm just going to leave it at zero. Do we want to shift it down? 
Um, well, we can, maybe we should give an exact value decisions. So this was at minus 0 0.6 and at it's two-way travel time. So I think it's about 1,800 meters depth. Ugh, but these are all very much approximations. So I'm going to rather just leave that as zero. Section azimuth hmm, and section dip. So azimuth is the direction of the line. So I honestly forgot to look at that. Um, so let's, I'm actually going to have to click cancel here. And I'm going to have to go find my map and read it off of the map. Okay, so this is my map, and you can see why this was an approximation, because I don't actually know exactly where my point A and B are, but um, A is approximately here, and B is down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click and go Protractor, and I don't always get this right, but let's just see. I'm going to click there to there, and up here. So now what I'm doing is, if you look in the bottom right-hand corner here, it tells you what the angle is. And so it's what the angle is between these two lines. You can obviously, if I'm closer, the angle is smaller. As I go up, um, which is along the line, I get 173. So I'm just trying to figure out what the azimuth of this line is. Am I doing it correctly? Yeah, I think so. So 173, I'm going to click Done. Right click and then Done. I'm going to go back here, 3D, orient to grid, that's fine, we're keeping those. Ugh, very unfortunate, we have to retype the values, and now my map is covering it. So let's go here. So, my top left corner was 985218.7. Okay, just double checking that. And my Y, 965.7. Nine two seven four seven point three. Okay, just double checking that. I'm going to leave that at zero. And we said my azimuth was one seven three, and my dip we leave at ninety. If you're not sure about any of these, you just click on the question mark, and it will describe to you what the different parameters are. Let's drag down here. So azimuth degrees clockwise from north and the dip um, is from the horizontal so ours is the second view the angle measured from the horizontal looking down the grid from the uppermost edge of plan grid has a dip of zero a section must have a dip of zero to ninety meaning it's got a vertical section so that's why we leave ours at ninety so I click on OK and then this is actually as far as we can go our next section we would actually have to go into 3D view.